The dense forests of the Amazon remain largely unexplored to this day. Hidden from our eyes within them are countless new species of plants, animals, microorganisms, as well as artifacts from unknown civilizations, remains of ancient humans, and much more. In this video, I invite you to get acquainted with the most amazing discoveries made by scientists. Enjoy the viewing. Perhaps you've never even heard of wild cats like Jaguarundus. Their name sounds similar to jaguars, but they look completely different. Jaguarundus are close relatives of pumas. Their primary habitat is South America. They can be found both in humid tropical forests and in mountainous areas. These cats are unique in their elongated body structure, which is unusual for other members of the feline family. Their body length rarely exceeds 77 centimeters. Due to their small size and non-standard physique, they can be mistaken for weasels or martens. Usually, Jaguarundus have brown or bright red fur. However, at the end of 2021 in the Abura Valley in Colombia, an albino kitten was discovered. The baby Jaguarundi had a completely white coat and red eyes, which is characteristic of albinos. Since animals with such a genetic peculiarity are much weaker than regular specimens, the kitten was taken to a local conservation park. There, it was provided with care and food, ensuring it could grow and live a normal life in safe conditions. This little one is the only found albino Jaguarundi. No jag The history of humanity is still not fully understood. In ancient times, many advanced civilizations lived on our planet. Scientists suggest that among them was a race of giants. Among local tribes in Ecuador, there are legends that speak of a great civilization of giants. They erected entire cities in the Amazon forests long before the first regular humans arrived here. In 2012, American archaeologist Benoit Duvernay, fascinated by Ecuadorian legends, traveled to remote tropical forests to learn more about ancient structures. Local residents told the researcher about a sacred place they believed to be a haven for spirits. When Benoit Benoit arrived at the sanctuary, he was amazed. Among tall trees were ancient megalithic structures. The largest of them resembled a pyramid, standing around 80 meters tall. At first glance, it may seem like these aren't man-made structures, but natural formations. However, upon closer examination, one can see hundreds of large stones, each weighing up to two tons. Benoit hypothesized that these peculiar objects might represent walls or roofs of ancient buildings, with the most intriguing parts hidden beneath these megaliths. He also noted that the stone blocks were bound together with an unknown solution resembling cement. Additionally, not far from the structures, researchers found huge tools likely used in construction. This could indicate that the Amazon forests were indeed home to a race of very tall, strong, and intelligent people. Scientists were shocked by this discovery and planned to conduct extensive excavations, which could potentially reveal a new mysterious civilization to the world. Unfortunately, Ecuadorian authorities didn't see any sensation in this news. They deemed the megaliths as natural formations and prohibited further research. The Amazon forests are home to one of the most gigantic spiders on our planet, the Goliath bird eater. This member of the tarantula family has a leg span of about 11 inches. Its weight can reach an astonishing half a kilogram. I believe these figures are enough to understand how massive this spider is. Bird eaters got their name thanks to the engravings of the German animal artist Maria Marion, which depicted similar spiders attacking hummingbirds. In reality, bird eaters do not hunt birds. Their favorite delicacy is insects, but they sometimes prey on small mammals, like mice. Their massive weight allows these spiders not to use webs for hunting. Typically, they hide in the foliage, and upon spotting their prey, they pounce on it. The Goliath then sinks its fangs into the victim's body and injects a neurotoxic venom, which liquefies the insides. This way, the spider can easily absorb the nutrients. Protective bristles are located on the Goliath's body. As soon as the spider senses danger, it starts rubbing its belly with its legs, thereby releasing tiny hairs that cause severe irritation when they come into contact with an animal's eyes or skin. These bristles also help the Goliaths detect the slightest air vibrations, replacing their sense of smell and vision. Despite its intimidating properties, the Goliath bird eater is not dangerous to humans. Hence, this species is very popular as a pet among arachnid enthusiasts.
In 2011, Peruvian geothermal source researcher Andres Ruzo, during an expedition in the Mayantuyacu forest, discovered an astonishing river. Steam rose from it, and its waters were filled with animals boiled alive. Ruzo was intrigued by this river and began his research. After speaking with the local Ashaninka tribe, he learned that the river is called Shane Timpishka. In the local language, the name translates as heated by the sun's heat. It turns out that people from the tribe had long known about this unusual river. Moreover, they've always considered it sacred. According to legend, at the river's bottom resides a deity in the form of a giant snake that heats the water with its hot breath. In reality, the boiling water forms for entirely different reasons. The total length of Shanae Timpishka is 5.6 miles. The water temperature in various parts of the river ranges from 113 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Andres Ruzo studied the boiling water anomaly for five years and concluded that there's molten magma beneath the water, which heats the river to these record temperatures. Additionally, Ruzo discovered new species of microorganisms in the river that have adapted to such extreme conditions. The Shanae Timpishka River is unique. There are many geothermal sources on our planet, but only one boiling river. In 2022, a group of scientists embarked on a scientific expedition to the Amazon forests to discover new animal species. However, what they saw didn't resemble any known forest inhabitants. Descending to a lake, the scientists froze in fear. In the water sat bizarre birds. They had a very long, thin beak. Their eyes seemed glassy, and instead of feathers, their skin was covered with fur resembling dreadlocks. Even stranger was their posture uncharacteristic for birds. One of the scientists decided to take a photograph of these creatures. As soon as the monsters heard the camera click, they let out a deafening scream, causing the entire team to run away, covering their ears. Gathering their courage, the people decided to approach the place again, but the strange creatures were gone. Whether they hid under the water or flew away remains a mystery. In the tropical forests of the Amazon, alongside cute and charming animals, reside dangerous and venomous creatures. One such group is the frogs from the Dendrobatidae family. Some species of Dendrobatids are considered the most poisonous frogs on Earth. Typically, members of this family are small in size. Their length averages one and a half inches, and their weight is up to five grams. A distinguishing feature of these frogs is their vibrant coloration, a warning sign for other animals to keep their distance. Despite their toxicity, they are visually appealing. Dendrobatids inhabit the banks of the Amazon and also the tropical forests. They love warm and humid weather. An optimal temperature for them is 77 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. They can adapt to both lower and higher air temperatures. However, these frogs aren't fond of water. There have been cases where, having fallen into a pond, Dendrobatids couldn't get out and drowned. These members of the family are also called dart frogs. They earned this nickname because indigenous tribes often used their poison to make venomous darts. The high toxicity of some dendrobatids is due to their diet of termites, ants, mites, and millipedes infusing their bodies with these toxins. Surprisingly, scientists have discovered beneficial properties in their venom. It turns out it has a more potent analgesic effect than morphine. As a result, populations of these frogs have significantly decreased, and today, hunting them is prohibited. The tropical forests of the Amazon boast an abundance of flora. There are about 80,000 different species of plants, half of which are vital for maintaining the global climate. It's no wonder these forests are called the lungs of our planet. Furthermore, the Amazon can be considered the richest place on Earth for medicinal herbs. Yet less than 5% of all plants have been studied for their healing properties. Modern medicine derives about 25% of the natural ingredients needed for drugs from tropical forests. Here are just a few examples from the myriad of beneficial plants in the Amazon. Cat's claw is very popular among the locals. They use it to treat a wide range of ailments, from rheumatism to toothaches. Crushed acciote is used by many tribes as a sunscreen. The leaves of matico are steeped in boiling water to treat sore throats and coughs. The curare bark contains the alkaloid d tubercurine in modern medicine, it shows positive effects in treating multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease. 
The beneficial properties of canalilla help combat women's diseases and even infertility. As you can see, the Amazon is astonishing with its abundance of healing herbs and trees. In February 2019, in a forest on the Brazilian island of Marajo, researchers noticed a large number of vultures. They decided to see what had attracted the scavengers. When they spotted a dead, 36-foot-long humpback whale, they were very surprised. During the summer, humpback whales make a long journey from the northern hemisphere to Antarctica. Hence, in February, it's almost impossible to find them near the Amazon. The whale's body was located 50 feet from the shore and likely ended up in the forest during a strong hurricane that had recently occurred in the area. The animal had no wounds, so the possibility of it being a victim of poaching was ruled out. Scientists decided to conduct an autopsy on the whale to find out how it ended up in these lands during the winter and the cause of its death. The study showed that the whale was only one year old. It probably got separated from its mother and got lost, ending up in freshwater. Inside its stomach was a vast amount of plastic, which was enough to kill the animal. After this incident, the Brazilian authorities took control of the environmental pollution situation. Giant snakes from the old horror movie Anaconda inhabited the Amazon. The film also mentions a tribe that worshipped these terrifying reptiles. Surprisingly, the horror movie's plot is partly true. The Amazon is indeed home to the world's largest snake species, the anaconda. The Warani tribe also lives in the dense forests of Ecuador. These people consider the anaconda a sacred animal and ensure that outsiders don't kill them. The Waorani reject civilization and usually avoid communication with outsiders. However, for some inexplicable reason, their chief allowed British scientists from the BBC to film a documentary about their forests. During filming, the Waorani men spotted a huge anaconda and decided to catch it with their bare hands. This particular individual was exceptionally large for its species. Its body length was 16.7 feet, while they typically grow up to 14.8 feet. Since anacondas are sacred to the Waorani, there's an interesting custom in the tribe where a hunter gains true strength only after capturing and releasing one of these snakes. So the anaconda caught during the film shoot was unharmed and was released back into the forest. When mentioning walking trees, some of you might recall the Ents from The Lord of the Rings. But this is not about them. The Amazon can truly be called a magical place, where trees grow that are hard to believe exist. They are called the Walking Palm, or Socratia exorisa. The palm's name speaks for itself. A distinguishing feature of this tree is its tall, exposed roots, which make it appear as though the Socratia is on stilts and can move on them. In the late 20th century, Scientists speculated that the palm could indeed move a short distance. They explained their theory by noting that in dense forests, the palm might not get enough light, and in such cases, thanks to its strong roots, it might change its location over several years. However, after extensive study and observation, this hypothesis found no evidence. There were numerous speculations about why the palm raises its roots from the ground, but none were confirmed. Therefore, Socratia is considered one of the most mysterious trees on Earth. Tropical basilisk lizards are also known as Jesus lizards for their unique ability to walk on water. They received their main name, basilisks, due to their resemblance to the mythological creatures of the same name. Basilisks inhabit the tropical forests of the Amazon. Their genus includes four species. On average, these lizards grow up to 35 inches in length, including their very long tail. Their ability to run incredibly fast across the water has long been of great interest to scientists. Basilisks can reach speeds of up to four and a half feet per second. Slow motion footage and studying their anatomical structure helped understand how they can run on the water's surface. The lizards avoid sinking underwater due to several features. Basilisks have very large, broad feet with webs that expand during running. Their long tail helps them maintain balance when there's no solid surface and achieve impressive speeds. The rapid movement of the basilisk creates air pockets under its feet, affecting the water's surface tension. This allows them to stay above the water.
The Amazon is home to many dangerous animals and insects, including electric eels. The electric eel is an astonishing bony fish that has learned to produce electricity and use it for defense and hunting. These inhabitants of the Amazon were first described in 1766. Their elongated body can reach up to eight and a half feet in length, weighing 44 pounds. Typically, all adult eel specimens have a similar marsh brown color. The lower part of the head and throat are brightly orange. Their bodies are entirely devoid of scales. These fish live in warm and murky waters of South America. To sustain their lives, they need to surface every 10 to 15 minutes to get oxygen. If an eel is deprived of this ability, it will die. Electric eels are nearly completely blind. Their electric field aids them in navigating their surroundings. Eels are predatory fish. Spotting their prey, they paralyze it with an electric shock. These animals primarily feed on other fish, but can also prey on small birds and amphibians. Scientists are intrigued by the eel's electric organs, which occupy more than 80% of this fish's body. Thanks to these organs, the eel can generate a voltage of up to 860 volts, with a current strength of up to 40 milliamps. This is enough to stun a full-grown horse. Therefore, eels, in essence, have no natural enemies. Attacking them is equivalent to committing suicide. Turtles seem like cute and harmless animals to us. However, among them, some look very intimidating. The Mata Mata or fringed turtle inhabits South America. Its appearance resembles that of a mythical water monster. On Mata Mata's triangular head, there is an elongated and thin snout, and along its neck, like fringe, dangle skin flaps. Despite its monstrous appearance, the turtle is not dangerous to humans. The unique shape of the head and the elongated snout allow the Mata Mata not to leave the water to breathe in air. The impressive fringe is used for camouflage. The turtle settles at the bottom, only poking its head out of the shell. At that moment, it becomes incredibly similar to fallen leaves or a log. Fish swimming by don't even suspect that they have ended up in the trap of a predator. As soon as the prey is at an optimal hunting distance, Mata Mata quickly opens its mouth and grabs it. The turtle's jaws are not adapted to chew food, but it never misses its mark. When the Mata Mata swiftly opens its large mouth, it creates a sort of funnel, and due to inertia, along with the water, the prey gets sucked into its maw. Mata Mata's unusual appearance and its almost motionless lifestyle attract aquarium enthusiasts. This turtle adapts well to captivity, provided it is fed exclusively live fish. The pink dolphin, also known as Inia or Boto, as the local inhabitants call it, is another unusual creature of the Amazon. Surprisingly, a few species of dolphins are freshwater, and Boto is one of them. The ancestors of the pink dolphin came to the Amazon around 15 million years ago from the ocean. Over time, they adapted to live in freshwater. Inia is considered the largest river dolphin. Their body can reach a length of two and a half meters and weigh up to 200 kilograms. One of their distinguishing features is a narrow snout with a long beak, slightly curved downward. The second highlight of Boto is, of course, their coloration. Young individuals have a non-distinctive gray color, but as they mature, dolphins turn pink while their belly remains white. Botos are predators. Their primary diet consists of fish, but thanks to their sharp and strong teeth, they can even hunt turtles, breaking through their shells. These dolphins are very voracious, eating about 12 kilograms of food daily. Botos mostly live solitary lives, but during the mating season, they gather in groups. At this time, they communicate with each other using a rich variety of sounds. These dolphins are recognized as the most intelligent among their river counterparts. In the Brazilian state of Acre, there are over 500 ground drawings called geoglyphs. These images are highly revered among the tribal peoples of the Amazon. The acre geoglyphs are several meters deep and are clearly visible from a bird's eye view. Scientists still can't precisely explain why and by whom they were created. Researchers from Finland and Brazil have spent a long time studying the geoglyphs. They eventually speculated that the native inhabitants of the Amazon created these giant geometric shapes and patterns for ritualistic purposes. They probably believed that with the help of the geoglyphs, they could communicate with the spirits of their ancestors and deities. For many tribes, geometric figures symbolized knowledge and power. Therefore, by creating the geoglyphs, they might have also hoped to gain strength granted from above. To determine the age of the geoglyphs, 
Scientists conducted a complex soil analysis. It revealed that the images were created about 4,000 years ago. The local residents greatly value the geoglyphs, which remind them of their ancestors. They protect the ground images, prohibiting construction on this territory. And that's all I have. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.